In this lesson, I am going to give a quick introduction to quadratic equations and the square root property. A quadratic equation is an equation equivalent to one of the form ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero where a, b, and c are real numbers and the coefficient of x squared is not equal to zero. Why do we want that the coefficient of x squared is not equal to zero? Because if a is equal to zero here, then it will no longer be a quadratic equation. It will just be a linear equation. Here are some examples of quadratic equations. So remember that for quadratic equations, the highest exponent of x is equal to 2. The square root property is saying that if the square of a number is equal to a constant, of course, our assumption here is that k must be greater than or equal to 0. Because if a squared is equal to a negative number, let's say negative 5, cannot happen. The square of a number is always positive or zero. So going back, if the square of a number is equal to k, then how do you solve for k? Now, most students, they just take the square root of k. Don't forget plus or minus square roots. Understand. For example, x squared is equal to 25. You cannot say that x is just equal to 5. Because square root of 25 is 5. It should be plus or minus the square root of 25, which is 5. Now, why is this square root property important? We use the square root property when there is no linear term in the quadratic equation. In other words, there is an x squared term, but there is no x term. Let me illustrate what I am saying here. In solving quadratic equations involving x squared, we just isolate the x squared term on one side of the equation and we get the square root of both sides, but we have to put a plus or minus sign. For instance, we have x squared minus 16. I do not have any x here, correct? I have no linear term. So I will just solve it as if it is just a linear equation. I will transpose 16 here and then x is equal to square root of 16, which is 4. But don't forget to put plus or minus. Next, we have 9x squared plus 4. Again, take note here that we have no x term. So what do we do? We just isolate the term involving x squared. 9x squared is equal to negative 4. But since we are solving for x, we have to divide both sides by 9. Correct? But what will we get here? x squared is equal to negative 4 over 9. Can the square of a number be equal to a negative number? No. So we say no solution or in particular, no real solution. Alright? But if I say that I want you to include complex numbers or imaginary numbers, we can also do it like this. We can still get the square root of both sides. When you get the square root of both sides, get plus or minus. Okay, so we have so we have x is equal to plus or minus. What is the square root of a negative number? You will just have an i, correct? And then you get the square root of four over nine, which is two thirds. Or you write that as x is equal to plus or minus two thirds i. Another example, we have the square of x minus 3 is equal to 3. Take note that you just have the form something squared is equal to a constant, correct? You might be saying there is an x here, there is a linear term. But take note that what I mean is that you do not have x squared and then x, alright? So in this case, I will just write this as x minus 3 is equal to plus or minus square root of 3. Understand? To get rid of the exponent 2 here. Get the square root of both sides and don't forget to include your plus or minus. So we have x is equal to transpose minus 3. It will become 3 plus or minus square root of 3. Next, 
will just isolate first my term involving the square of x plus 7. This is equal to 13. My x is here. We have the numbers 3 and then plus 7 and then the square. What should be the first thing that we have to eliminate here? You have to remove first the last operation that happened on this side. And what is that? Take note, what is the first operation that happened here? 7 was added to x, correct? Because parenthesis, PEMDAS. And then you raised it to 2, and then you multiply it to 3. So that means that we have to get rid of 3 first. Divide both sides by 3. We get x plus 7 squared is equal to 13 over 3. We're now ready to get rid of the 2 here by getting the square root of both sides. Don't forget, plus or minus 13 over 3 is equal to x plus 7. We'll write it here. x plus 7 is equal to, let me just rationalize that. This is square root of 13 over square root of 3 times square root of 3 both numerator and denominator, so that's plus or minus square root of 39 over 3. And therefore, x is equal to negative 7 plus or minus square root of 39 over 3. In this lesson, we were able to solve quadratic equations wherein there is no x term, but we only have an x squared term. However, there are quadratic equations, of course, which involves x squared and x term at the same time. In our next lesson, I will show you ways of solving quadratic equations wherein you have an x term already, and those three ways are factoring, completing the square, and quadratic form.